When we're looking at transformations, and specifically the image of a transformation, we've now learned that the image makes up a vector subspace. And as soon as we have a vector subspace, then a natural question to ask is what would be a basis for that subspace? What are some building blocks that could be used with linear combinations to build every single element that exists in the image? Earlier, we had a bit of trial and error and equation solving to see if we had a particular vector in the image. So now we're gonna be a little more strategic or take a different angle on it. In any case, we're gonna start with our transformation and look for a basis for specifically the output vectors we can build using this transform. In this example here, we have our transform L that maps two elements, so elements of R2, to what do we have? We have one, two, and three, output elements. So we're talking about an element in R3. So we're talking mapping the plane to three-dimensional space would be a way to analyze that. And if we're looking for the basis of the image, well, we're looking for output values. So let's just consider what we get when we transform an arbitrary xy value. We're going to write this using the vector notation. So I'll put these into a column just to make it look a little different. Same content, but just a different visualization. And here we have x plus y, and the third component we get out, the image is all about the outputs, is 4x plus 5y. Now that's not too interesting until we extract all the x values and the coefficients that go with those, which are in this case here 2, 1, and 4. And then separately, we consider all the y components, which have coefficients negative 3, 1, and 5. So this version of the transform, L of xy, is identical to this, which is identical to what we started with. However, in this form, I think you can start to see where we might get a basis from. If I take any x and y, what kind of vectors do I get as part of my output? Well, I'm gonna get a linear combination of those. Let's just formalize that. So our question about the image is what elements of R3 can be made by L by choosing different x, y values. Different x, y input values. Well, just looking at this output space here, the result of doing a transform of x and y is we get any linear combination of specifically these two vectors here, the vector 2, 1, 4, and the vector negative 3, 1, 5. No matter what x and y we pick for our input, we're going to get those multiples of these two building block vectors, which were defined by the transform itself. And a corollary to that is, well, if any vector in the image can be made as a linear combination of these elements, then that set of 2, 1, 4, and negative 3, 1, 5 is a spanning set or a generating set for, for what? Well, for the image of L. Those are all the possible outputs. And now we're halfway to what we were looking for. If we have a spanning set for a vector space and we're looking for a basis, we just need one more ingredient because we recall that a basis is equal to a spanning set plus linearly independent. We need those two conditions to be able to call a set a basis. And in this particular case here, our set, which is the 2, 1, 4 and negative 3, 1, 5 contains two non-multiple non -multiple vectors and that means that the set is going to be linearly independent. Now of course if we had more we have to do more sophisticated testing but we have this nice easy rule for two vectors in a set. The set is linearly independent and that combined with the early result that the set was already a spanning set for the image of L Let's draw it out the full logic since this set 
2, 1, 4, negative 3, 1, 5 is a spanning set. Seems a little redundant, but here we go. A spanning set for the image of L. And it is also linearly independent. That set of vectors is linearly independent. That implies that this set is a basis for, well, what did this set span? It spanned the image for the image of L. Now let's just add a quick graphical interpretation here. If we imagine we take our set in R2 here, so take all the points in here, we map them over to R3 over here in three dimensions through the transform L. Let's go do all that in green just for consistency. Then as we map all these points over to here, they're going to cover a vector subspace. Well, what vector subspace? Well, it's going to be the space spanned by these two linearly independent vectors. So imagine we have the vector 2, 1, 4, and we have the vector totally arbitrary directions. These are not drawn to scale or even in the right direction, but just to give an impression, if we have those two vectors together, they're going to define some plane and the image of L, the points we can reach from R2 through that transform into R3, that plane is going to be the image of L the points we can reach with that transform.